Guys, today we're going to take a look at how to put Windows XP in a container. Now, this is one of many videos that I've been doing in a kind of a series, if you will, on how to take old tech and put it into something that's fairly modern and then run it in a browser so that you can play games or work on apps, whatever it might be. This particular approach is one that I've been wanting to do for a while. I put Windows 98 in a container. I put Windows Server 2008 in a container. I even put Mac OS in a container. It seems like it should be pretty easy to do XP. And as I started working, on this, I ran into a lot of issues related to putting XP in a container. For some reason, it just didn't want to work. And after doing some research and digging around, I found out that it really had nothing to do with XP or this or the stack that I was using. It had a lot of, to do with the computer that I was running it on. So after uh, working on my computer a little bit and figuring out some of the idiosyncrasies with that, I'm not going to get into the technical details of it at all, but it just worked after I fixed my computer. So with that, I'm just going to dive right into the Docker file, take a look at it, show you what it looks like and then from there I'll show you how to get XP installed in a container and then we'll load it up and hopefully we'll have an XP experience that looks like Windows XP and is Windows XP except it'll be running in a Docker container and streaming back to a browser with sound. So here's the Docker file. It's pretty straightforward. It looks a lot, a lot like the example that I did for Windows 98. So I'm going to briefly run through this one. It uses a lot of the components that the Windows 98 example use, including sound. But the biggest difference between this one and the one for Windows 98 is this one is actually using Kimu, is what I use on the example for Server 2008. So this one is not using x86 box, it's using Kimu for the virtualization. So with that in mind, everything else is pretty much the same. So this one starts off with Ubuntu 22.4. It does some non-interactive installs of a bunch of packages, including Kimu and LX Terminal, which it boots into. It's using Nginx kind of as a reverse proxy so that you have a separate stream for the audio and for the video. The video comes off one stream, the audio comes off another. And then the client, which is right here, uh, basically interprets those uh, using two different uh, streams, so two different WebSocket streams. This uh, particular piece of code injects the audio code into NoVNC, which doesn't come with audio, but it basically takes the code, injects the ability to have audio, and now you can stream the audio back to the client as well as the video. And this right here installs some of the acceleration that is used by VNC uh, so that you can get some graphical acceleration using virtual GL on turbo VNC right here. This particular one right here just configures the no VNC boot script and it's using the rat poison desktop. And so it's a Chromeless uh, desktop environment that is supposed to be designed for all keyboards, but it's really lightweight. So I like it for this particular application and it's going to launch into LX terminal, what you see right here. It's going to expose port 80 and then it just uses supervisor D to kind of bootstrap all of the components because there's a number of those. And so it just made sense to use something like supervisor D instead of just trying to bootstrap that all on the entry point. So that's the Docker file. Building this is pretty straightforward and starting it is also pretty straightforward. So I'm running this in WSL2, and this particular instance is going to be built using WSL2, but you can run this in any Linux context that has an x86 processor behind it. So I'm just going to build this using Docker build. So Docker build, uh, give it a tag, call it Kimu, uh, or whatever you want to call it, Kimu-xp, and then just build the local Docker file, and that should build pretty quickly, depending on your internet speed. Now once you have it, you'll want to run it with uh, both a port forward and a mount for storage so you can keep the uh, data outside of the Docker container. So that'd be like your ISOs and your VHDs that you're going to be creating using Kimu. So I'm going to do Docker run. I'm going to do dash P. I'm going to port forward 888 to port 80, uh, which is the backend port, and then do a dash V. And I'm just, just going to basically stick this folder right here uh, onto the uh, folder inside the container at ISOs or something like that. And then I'm going to tell it to use Kimu-XP. Uh, and uh, that will then start up this particular container. Now it's running, everything should be ready to go in the container. So I'm gonna hop over to a browser and then start installing Windows XP. So within the browser, you're gonna point it to the IP or host name for the Docker context that you're gonna be running in. In my case, that is the IP address for WSL2, which is 172.24.50.168, then the port that I created when I created the container, which is port 8888. And that's gonna give me a list of files right here. I'm gonna click on the vnc.html and log into this. And it's going to pull up 
uh, LX term right here. You can see that I have LX term running. Now, uh, I want to do a couple of commands here. I basically want to create an, a disk image. I'm going to use uh, some prepare commands here uh, that look like this. This one basically creates a disk image called VHD, uh, XP VHD at 20 gigabytes. And uh, this one is going to be created at this path right here, which is that folder that I mounted from the host into the container. And so uh, I'm just going to put that into the clipboard and then I'm going to minimize that and then go right here to paste. And then that will create uh, that particular folder uh, and then that file right there. So if I do an ls slash um, ls slash isos, um, you should see uh, several files in here. If I can zoom out here or just do dash l uh, dash l dash a like that, it'll list them. And we should see the xp.vhd uh, right here. Now I'm going to be using this uh, xp.iso to install Windows XP. So that's my next command, which is just basically to boot the VM. And it comes with a couple of different options. So let's repopulate the uh, uh, clipboard here. And this one's going to call Kimu System uh, i386, which is a 32-bit uh, implementation of the x86 instruction set. And then it's going to say CPU Pentium, uh, give it two gigs of memory. This is the hard drive image that I just created. This is the CD-ROM image I'm going to boot from. And then I'm going to give it a NIC uh, right here, and it's going to have some port forwards to it if you want to do that. And then I'm going to use the sound hardware of AC97. All that looks pretty good, so we can then uh, minimize this right here and then um, paste in that command. And that will start our virtual machine right here that I need to zoom out on. And this will start booting the machine, and then you'll see that you have the uh, XP booting that you can then use to install Windows XP. And this uh, will install at a fairly native speed in any case. Uh, so basically just be patient uh, and install it, just like you would any other installation of Windows XP. Now, depending on your computer, your hardware, and all the other factors that go into this, this can take anywhere from you know 10 minutes to hours depending on you know, what you're working with but this particular one is going to work okay on this particular machine because it's uh, running it in an emulated mode but it's uh, not the fastest emulation in the world because it is running on a virtualized platform running in WSL2 but I'm not going to walk you through how to set up Windows XP if you can get this far far you can probably finish the setup for Windows XP there's really no idiosyncrasies beyond this so just let it do its thing after you installed it you should have a Windows XP instance up and running so after you've installed it you'll go through the reboot process you'll see some screen that looks like this and it's just going to load Windows XP it's a uh, fairly typical load experience for Windows XP in the era. And so it just loads the load screen. It'll go through uh, a fairly quick boot up process and then it will log you in automatically. And we should hear the Windows XP chime here uh, after we see the welcome screen. And I don't have any login set up, so I don't have to log in. It's just gonna log in automatically. And uh, there's the XP chime. The sound is a little glitchy still. Uh, I'm not exactly satisfied with that, but I'll have to figure out what's going on with that. But in any case, it does work otherwise you can see that i have a fully functional version of windows xp and you could use this for most modern applications that were designed for the time uh, so if you like to run solitaire obviously you can play solitaire on this that's what i'm doing now because i just really didn't have a better demo in any case but um, it is fun to mess around with this old tech i'm not particularly um, keen on the idea of running something that is just uh, going to be for nostalgia's sake but there is some application to this i guess you could uh, use this for uh, old applications that you want to put in a docker container but you don't want to run in um, something like wine or something like that you could run uh, different kinds of services on windows xp but there would of course be a lot of security implications to that as well so i don't know that i would recommend this per se but in any case you can see that it, it does have decent enough performance to where you can run um, some apps in it it's got fairly decent graphics performance as well and that's something that if you are interested in uh, you can expect that for yourself and also play around with the settings to make it better i'm sure there's probably a better way to uh, make this more user friendly or more uh, hardware accelerated if you want to do that or any number of different things that would work 
for running different applications in Windows. In any case, this is just another one of the many operating systems that I put into a VM inside of a Docker container. We've, of course, did Windows Server 2008. We did Windows 98. We did Mac OS, even. I still want to do Chrome and maybe Android, but I'm still working on some other things right there, so those will come at a future date. I don't have really a timeline on those, but I definitely want to work on that as well. But in case, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. Also, uh, like this video and also share it with your friends. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below if there's something that you want to see containerized. That might be some old tech. In any case, as always, thanks for watching the video and I hope to see you on future videos on Tech on Fire. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.